Hey guys, what is up? Eric Hill here, one half of the Hill Twins. Today I'm back at it again with another video for you guys. As you guys can see on the screen, we're doing a deck profile of the new Set 16 Trunks Xeno. It's a new black deck and archetype that's coming out of Set 16, and it's currently being previewed right now by Bandai. So we don't have access to all the cards, but this is what I've been playing around with on Untap. Been having a lot of fun with it. So I wanted to go ahead and share it to you guys and kind of give you the basis of what this deck is going to look like, right? Um, and real quick, if you guys don't know, we jumped back on a YouTube content train. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the content that we've been providing for you guys. We have a lot more uploaded and ready to be released to you guys. Deck profiles, gameplay videos, untapped videos. We just want you guys to go and do your part by supporting us by hitting that like button. Make sure you mash that um, that bell uh, to be notified when we go live and when we uh, drop these videos so you guys can have the uh, uh, instant access to viewing these uh, videos and new content that we're um, you know, providing for you guys. But um, yeah, so without further ado, let's jump right into the video, guys. So, as you guys can see, we got our black trunks up here. Um, again, set 16. He is uh, an activate main leader on the front side. He has an effect once per turn. Choose one black card in your hand. Send it to your warp and draw two cards. This is really powerful because he doesn't even have to attack. So on turn one, you can instantly go ahead and just pitch a card to draw two and he fix your warp. So you have a lot of powerful other archetypes that you can add into this deck because of his ability to just instantly send a card to a warp and draw two cards. So he has a lot of mobility and he has a very powerful awaken turn. Um, his effect is when your life is at four or less or you have five or more singing cards in your warp, you may draw one card, switch one of your energies to active mode and flip him over. One of the key things to note is that you don't you keep your life so if you're at eight life or you're at six life or what have you you stay at that life total which is very powerful um if you're awakening with the five or more sins which is very easy to, to get in this deck um so that's that and um let's go ahead and look at his uh, awaken side i'll go ahead and bring that up for you guys we have SSG Trunks, Crimson Warrior. Very, very, very powerful. He is a blocker, keyword skill, which is pretty nuts. And um, yeah, so he's a blocker. And when this card attacks, you draw two cards, then you choose one card in your hand, you send it to the warp. So this is powerful because you don't have to have a card in your hand to pitch when he attacks in order to draw your cards or to warp. So that's very powerful because when you're playing against hand control, when they want to, uh, when you want to attack, you now get to just draw two cards and just choose any card you draw and warp it now. And that's good because in this archetype, there are battle cards that you can play for your warp. So you can open up plays. I think he was designed very well with that in mind, of course. Um, and on his awaken turn, it's powerful because you can warp one, draw two, awaken, draw one, untap one, attack, draw two and warp one. So you're drawing about five cards instantly or you're seeing five cards instantly in that one turn along with another uh, bunch of effects that are either allowing you to draw or see more cards. Um, <clears throat> Auto, once per turn, when your opponent attacks a unison card, you switch this card to active mode, and he's a blocker. So it's really powerful because you get to protect your unisons. And if he's already stood, you can, you know, block and then, you know, activate your auto. And so, you know, he's really powerful because he can block your battle cards. He can block your unison. And it's just, you know, he provides a different way that Black is playing, which is powerful. And like I said, if in fact you are able to awaken at a high life um, instantly, you can just, you know, you can start blocking, taking that damage and calling it a day. Um, so let's jump into our first uh, battle cards um, and whatnot. Oops, just want to do, no, sorry. So we're just trying to group them like that face up <clears throat> so our first battle cards are going to be our um uh, uh, super saiyan vegeta um prince strike back this is our uh super combo for the deck you're probably wondering hey eric why don't you use the super combo that allows you to you know draw when you have 
five cards in warp or you have sparking and it's specifically because this is the best black super combo in the game as far as we know it and i intend on playing with my life at four or less so it's okay because it allows me to just instantly have access to um you don't have access to drawing two cards it's more mobility it also has multifunctional in, in the deck being a vegeta card and just allows more uh, uh, um you know interactions so that's the reason why we choose him over any of the other ones um next guys let's go ahead and open this up now face up Boom, we got our Super Saiyan God Trunks Power Awakened. This card is a new card coming out of set 16. Very, very, very powerful card for black in general um, and in, within this archetype. Um, so he's up here on the screen. I'll go ahead and read him out if you guys can't see him. Uh, basically, he's Deflect and Dual Attack. Those are his keyword skills. Here's another permanent that if this card is removed from a battle area, remove it from the game instead. So this kind of just allows this card from being able to be looped because um, it is a very powerful card. Um, yeah, so Deflect Dual Attack is a 20k battle card, 5 drop. Um, auto, when this card attacks, place up to 3 black battle cards from your warp to the drop. So this is also a really powerful effect because he gets to fix your drop. So you'll be able to play over him in this deck just by establishing him on board and being able to attack warp and pull them back so you you have your your your, your drop effect and within one card which is very powerful this card is also very powerful against blue um so he has deflect they can't stop him and now they gotta deal with a 20k uh dual attack um and then he has an activate main um if your leader card is a black card and there are eight or more cards in your warp play this card from your warp so he's actually very powerful because you can tap two energy, play him from your warp if you have eight or more cards in your warp. And now he's deflect, dual attack, and he's a card that's thick. One of the cool things about him, though, is that he doesn't have unique. So you can go ahead and drop this big boy in one turn, and you can drop another one. Or even better, if you have four energy and you have a play where you just gotta win and you know you don't have much of a hand or what have you, you can leader attack, draw a two. Put this guy in a warp, summon the first one, attack, attack, play him again, attack, attack, and, um, you know, you can call it a day so long as you have the eight or more cards in the warp. Um, yeah, so it's very, very, very powerful. Very great card for the archetype and very great card for black in general. You, you're going to see this card in a lot of black decks, um, you know, Gogeta Zeno, uh, Vajax, um, you know, um, Goku Zeno, you're just gonna see a lot of this card in a lot of black decks. Very powerful for sure. Um, next, guys, we got our big boys here. Obviously, our SS3 Gogeta. Um, this card is just a staple in black decks, just with having access to Union Fusion. Um, it's just really powerful. Um, you know, one energy. It's possibly, like I said, the best black card in the game with just being so energy efficient and just doing so much. Um, for one energy, so um, that's self-explanatory. We play for because there's a lot of removal in the game now. Yellow has a lot of removal, so um, <clears throat> face up. Next for the archetype, this is a new card coming out of set 16. SS3 Trunks challenging a Demon God. This is another powerful black card that you're probably gonna see, um, and 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 these decks in particular with Trunks. Um, he's unique, which is which is good. Um, if there are ten or more black battle cards in your war, ten or more black cards in your war, this card gains double strike. So he's powerful just off of that. Um, and then he has a activate main limit spirit boost limit one spirit boost one, uh, one and one black. If your leader card is a black trunk Zeno only card, and you have two or more energy, play this card. And you have three or more energy, play this card from your war. So um, instantly this card is really powerful because, you know, you have access to summoning this card and it's it's pretty much one energy. Uh, it can get double strike and, um, you know, it's just another battle card that you can play from your war. And it goes in tangent with the units that we play in this deck and you will get into that going into... Um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that going into it, which I think the unison is right here. So we'll just go ahead and reveal the unison for you guys real fast. Face up. 
uh, unison of choice is our supreme kai of time opposing the empire now um this is the mock version of the deck we're probably going to be dropping more deck profiles as the newer cards continue to be revealed but this is um the unison that i've been messing around with it's very powerful uh for multiple reasons it doesn't have like an ot but activate us uh, so auto once per turn if a leader card is a black trunks and it's your turn when you play a battle card from your warp draw one card and add a marker to it so essentially this card is making this card completely free so you can uptake warp up to the top three cards of your deck and if you hit that you hit that if you choose not to warp you don't have to warp but he goes plus one automatically and you summon this guy for free and draw a card because you basically uptake for nothing so you know you still have your plus one and you have a plus one when you remove that marker so you stay at three and you just drew a free card so essentially it's draw is plus one is draw a card warp up to three if you do it correctly um and yeah, you know, so it just makes it very powerful. We only need three because this card is going to be um, always in your warp um, between being on the field and dying, being in the being fodder for your leader effect, being drop fodder and being overwhelmed. So this card, I don't think you need any more than three um, at all, just because of how easily it's able to come back. Unlike this card where it has to be warped. I mean, you, you remove from the game afterwards. Um, next, going into the archetype um, face up, we have our one drop trunks duty of the time patrol. This is the scribe for the deck. It's really powerful. Just being a one drop and black that's able to search for a four or less um, uh, sand card and a two drop unison, black unison. And so this card can search for, if you're playing Kai, it can search for your Kai. If you're playing the um, the Bardock Unison, 2-drop Bardock Unison, it, it can search for Bardock Unison. Um, and it can search for this guy, which, you know, you may want to have this card in your hand to, to warp it. And it could also search for your um, Bardock. So, I mean, for your Vegeta's. And this is the main function. You just want to see your super combos and you want to have it in there to have your super combos. It's a one drop. It's very powerful um, just because of what it's able to do. Next, guys, following the set 16 archetype, we got our son Goten challenging the Demon God. Um, this card is cool. When it's played, you can uh, send up to the top three cards of your deck to your warp. So it's this kind of warp fodder, which is pretty cool. And, um, you know, it's just a one drop 10K, essentially, that is fodder for her effect, you know. And it's just a battle card that can be played from your warp. It also has a spirit boost one effect. Uh, you can spirit boost one to get critical. It's not the most powerful card. I'm actually thinking as I was playing the list to take it out because um, it doesn't do as much as I would like. But just kind of giving you guys what we have so far, this is kind of what the archetype is looking like. So, um, but it may not be in the main archetype. Um, <clears throat> next, guys, we have our two uh, Sun Gohan. This is where the swap should be made. Um, but because I already organized the list and it took a while for me to do this on untap, um, you know, I'm just leaving it as is. But I would have three Sun Gohans over the, the crit guys because Sun Gohan is a blocker, which is pretty cool. And on your later turns, when things are getting rough and you got four or five energy, you can tap one, two or three energy to summon three of these guys. You already drawn one from the um, the Kai and, um, you know, you're 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 not have that that defense personally. So, um, he's really good. Uh, if I was to take this out, I would just leave this in at like three because he's just really good in general. Um, next, you know what? I'm just gonna reveal all of this real fast now. Face up. So all these guys are going to be face up. So we're just going to run through it for the sake of time. We got Pan challenging the Demon God. This is a new uh, card coming out of set 16. Very powerful for this archetype. Your leader does have to be the Trunks, Zeno. Um, and yeah, she's pretty broken. So um, she's a two drop, one specified black. Um, counter attack, play this card. No, it's not an actual negate. She doesn't negate the attack. Um, but during your opponent's turn, reduce this cost in your hand by one. She's a one drop counter attack that plays this card. Sort of kind of like Kai, um, the secret rare. It doesn't negate, but it has an effect thereafter. Um, if your leading card is a black trunks only card and you choose one card in your hand, you send it to your warp, you can, um, when this card is played, um, you know, your opponent cannot attack with battle cards unless they choose two cards in their hand and, and discards it each time. Now, 
Um, I think she's pretty fair because it is a powerful effect to be in one drop. I wish she would have warped, made your opponent warp it because it's more of a, a cost. Um, remember, guys, we have a lot of fodder for like discarding, such as the borrowers and the other one drop um, color specific cards. Um, so they can also proc those always and just allow attacking to be easier. But hey, you know, she's still very powerful. And if they're not main boarding those cards against you, then you just have a floodgate that is just completely powerful for battle cards. And it's one energy. So very, very, very powerful. Um, <clears throat> we have it at four because. Although it's not a negate, it's something that is just a deterrent against uh, aggression. Um, next, we have our SS4 uh, Beyond All Limits. This belongs in every black deck. It's possibly one of the best overwhelms in the game for black in general. Just being able to overwhelm and pick up anything in your drop or warp because you're warping it clearly from a 3 to 7. Uh, it's just, just very powerful. You don't often pick up 7 drops because you don't really play 7 drops. But in this case, it's very powerful. And uh, we play it at 3. Next, guys, we have our Supreme Kai of Time, Labyrinth, Unleashed. It's just an additional negate um, that just removes troublesome battle cards. Um, it's not much removal in the deck, and that's why we have our three Mass Saiyan here. Um, three th three uh, Secret Identities, just because you can overwhelm um, pretty consistently in the deck with just how the archetype is built so far. Even your leader effect allows you to Spirit Boost and pull two cards back to warp a battle card. Um, so you have access to token removals, little drop removals, and then you have your leader card um, and his spirit boost for like the bigger battle cards. Um, and then namely two chompers, um, chomper and any black deck is just important. It sucks that, you know, it feels like black is aggro, but I have some ideas with this deck and we're gonna release those as well. Um, next. We got these cards coming up, face up. <clears throat> Obviously, it's our True Fighting Spirit package. Um, we got our four Son Goku True Fighting Spirits. Um, the card is just nuts. Um, and because you are a um, Black Saiyan leader, you have access to the um, counter effect. And then you have access to the Vegeta, which will also punish Blue uh, for untapping. And Blue is going to be really good coming into the next set. So, um, you know, we, we don't form four just because um, you just want to have that access to just being able to warp these guys, summon your gold jeter, having access to awaken fast. Or if you awaken with the warp effect, um, then you can just start summoning these guys and taking your life to attack. And that's just really powerful. And then last but not least, guys, we have our secret rare, which is Pan. Pan is the optimal secret rare of choice in every black deck for the most part. Kai versus Pan can be argued, but Pan is just a very powerful effect, a very powerful card, stops aggression, and I want to be able to apply aggression to you and then stop you from being able to play back so that I can do what I'm doing again. And Pan allows you to do that. Also, black is energy um, restricted in terms of not having the ability to untap energy. So you want to have a secret rare like this that's going to be free and still be effective. Kai is very effective, but Kai does cost one and one energy in black is, it could be very troublesome, you know, it could be very troublesome. And now you're sitting there with a card that you gotta place under the bottom of the deck with your secret rare in order to, you know, survive. And it's just, you don't want that. So, um, very powerful card, um, self-explanatory. And yeah, guys, so that's the archetype. That's the deck right now. This is Mach 1. Um, I already have a lot of changes in mind, but this is what I've been testing with on Untap. And uh, it's been very fun. Um, I guess I can say that the deck is very, very, very promising. And hopefully, you know, we'll see what the other um, what the other reveals come to, to show us, to point us in the correct direction. But this is what I personally feel is really good for just a baseline of the archetype. So, guys, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for um, listening to me uh, talk about the archetype and the deck. And uh, I really want you guys to go ahead and leave a like because it helps the video grow. It helps, you know, share the video throughout YouTube to other Dragon Ballers. And, um, yeah, guys, if you're loving the content, man, hey, like I said, hit that, that, that subscribe button and that bell button, man. And, like always, stay super.